it's difficult to, you know, to, to talk on a topic which is very new. However, I tried my best to review the literature in past two decades to, to understand why this trial of canagliflozin in a patient with diabetic kidney disease called credence should be called incredible. Why this is a big deal and to understand that I need to go back to all the trials conducted uh, in patients with diabetes with uh, kidney disease as well as patients with chronic kidney disease with or without diabetes. So I will take you through the trials, quickly their results, and to understand how the credence comes in the context of all the big trials in the past two decades. So when we look back into the trials conducted in diabetic patients with nephropathy, remember these are exclusive diabetic chronic kidney disease trial. And if you put it in a chronological order, and unfortunately I had to make a comment that let me talk about the series of negative renal trials in diabetic kidney disease. So it's not exactly renal, it's a basically a cardio renal trials. Majority of them looked for the renal endpoint primarily and also looked for the cardiac endpoint. For example, 4D was a study conducted with atorvastatin, as you all know, it's 20 milligram versus plespo. And the primary endpoint was the composite of 3P mess. You would be surprised that not only atorvastatin failed to produce any cardiovascular benefit, but there was increase in fatal stroke, as you can appreciate, which was highly statistically significant. The next in the line was the drugs called protein kinase C beta inhibitor, RBX, popularly called ruboxyastorin. This molecule has been tested in diabetic retinopathy. So we have a meta-analysis from the pulled data of three diabetic retinopathy trial where the renal endpoint was the secondary outcome. And you can, could make out that this newer molecule, which was initially exciting to be, didn't show any benefit in renal and the eye outcomes uh, in this particular trial. The other way to treat uh, diabetic kidney disease was to correct hemoglobin, and people thought that if you correct hemoglobin by giving a erythropoietin kind of derivative, so this is a called trial called TREAT. It was done with derbopoietin alpha, and uh, in the active arm, the HbA1c was raised at least 2%, uh, hemoglobin was raised 2% higher than the placebo, and there was no benefit in the primary renal or cardiovascular endpoint. Unfortunately, there was increase in the stroke by 92% with a highly statistical p-value. The fourth trial was done with uh, another newer, uh, at that point of time, excitic molecule called Ebosentan, which is a non-selective endothelin A receptor antagonist, had few pilot studies suggesting benefit in proteinuria. This, this was conducted to compare with placebo on the top of RAS blocker, and there was no benefit in primary renal endpoint, and there was significant increase in heart failure, and the trial was terminated prematurely because of increase in heart failure. The another group of investigators thought that a TGF beta inhibitor, you know, by virtue of reducing fibrosis in the kidney, might be useful in diabetic kidney disease. So pyrfinidone, which is a TGF beta inhibitor, was compared to placebo. And, and looked for a renal endpoint, which was the progression of EGFR. In one of, uh, you know, dose of this particular molecule, pyrifenidone, there was improvement in the EGFR, but this was not consistent with the increasing dose of TGF beta inhibitor. There are further few trials. Sun macro, this was a trial with sulodexide, which is a mixture of natural glycosaminin, glycans, polysaccharide. Uh, again failed to show any benefit. The altitude was one of the very popular trials where a direct renin inhibitor called Eliskyren uh, was compared to placebo on the top of RAS blocker. People thought that blocking completely the RAS pathway, we might get, get benefit, but unfortunately there wasn't any benefit in primary cardiovascular or renal endpoint. 
In fact, there was a significant risk of adverse event, in particular hyperkalemia, hypotension, and that's why trial stopped prematurely due to adverse event. Another trial was called Varnefron D, was a trial where ACE inhibitor and RAS blocker combined was given, again, with the thinking that if you block the renin angiotensin pathway, you, you might protect kidney. Unfortunately, this trial was also stopped prematurely due to increase in hyperkalemia and acute kidney injury, and, and since then, we don't use ACE inhibitor and ARB together. And finally, another molecule called bardoxolone, uh, this is called trial Beacon, uh, which actually looked for a different renal endpoint and cardiovascular endpoint. Again, there was no benefit, rather there was increase in heart failure hospitalization and trial was stopped prematurely due to adverse event. So what we, we noticed that these nine trials which was conducted in diabetic kidney disease was primarily the negative trial. If you see the trials conducted in a patients with chronic kidney disease, where diabetic patients were also included, so I have uh, put into the bracket how many patients were having diabetic kidney disease. The trial which actually targeted for hemoglobin normalization with erythropoietin, you can see two trials didn't show any benefit in the renal endpoint. The trials with the statin called Aurora, this is a trial with Rosuba statin, didn't show any benefit. We talked about 4D with Atorva. Now this is Aurora with Rosubastatin. No benefit in a patients with a chronic kidney disease, including diabetic nephropathy. People also tried to look into other aspects to correct bone mineral disease in chronic kidney disease. And again, unfortunately, failed to produce any benefit. You can see Decor done with Sevalemer failed. The Evolve done with Sinacalcet failed. The Primo done with vitamin D, pericalcitol failed. People also looked whether by decreasing homocysteine you could protect kidney and uh, two trials with folic acid or combination of folic acid to vitamin B6 or 12 as fast and host again didn't find any benefit uh, in progression of chronic kidney disease including diabetes. The only positive trial which is there uh, partially I would say positive is called SARP. Uh, 20% patients had diabetic kidney disease. This was done with Simba and EGTMIBE. Uh, this sold reduction in the MACE by 17%, but please remember in SARP trial, patients with CKD uh, having established cardiovascular disease were excluded from the trial, thus limits the applicability of the SARP trial. When it comes to the diabetic kidney disease, and if you see the rage of hope of any drugs which has been able to reduce the progression of diabetic kidney disease came first in 2001 in the form of IRMA-2 trial. This is a soft endpoint trial with irbisartan and which shown to reduce the progression from micro to microalbinuria, independent of BP reduction. You can see there was a 70% reduction in progression of from micro to macroalbinuria. However, this is a soft surrogate endpoint trials, and we need to look into the hard renal endpoint. Uh, on the similar uh, you know, issue of NEGM, two more trials, which was basically uh, on hard renal endpoint trial, uh, the IDNT with irbisartan and renal with losartan, and where their, uh, the primary composite renal endpoint was this, the you know, standard uh, the renal endpoint, like doubling of creatinine, development of ESRD, or death due to of either renal or cardiovascular cause. The first trial uh, which shown progression of diabetic kidney disease was with irbisartan and the losartan, and that's why we, since 2001, we use ARB or ACE inhibitor as a first line drug uh, to progress, uh, you know, to protect the progression of diabetic kidney disease. Uh, very recently, two more trials, uh, so the sonar and credence was, you know, fortunately simultaneously presented at uh, World Congress of Nephrology uh, last year. And uh, the etrocentan was the, you know, same, the ebocentan derivative from the SN trial, but this is very selective endothelin A antagonist. And you can see uh, this molecule, uh, you know, this time shown the reduction in the progression of diabetic kidney disease by 35%. But the lingering problem with this class of drug was the heart failure, as I talked about with ebocentan, did persist in the SONAR trial as well, although it wasn't statistically significant. Uh, but uh, despite reduction uh, in the 
primary renal endpoint, there was 33% increased signals of heart failure with etrocentan. Uh, on the same day, uh, the trial which was presented was credence, and this is what I'm going to talk, why this is a big deal. This was a trial, renal endpoint trial with canagliflozin 100 milligram versus placebo on the top of RAS blocker. And I will take you through the details. There was significant reduction in the primary renal endpoint and also of the secondary cardiovascular endpoint. And you can see the difference between sonar and credence that although the sonar also reduced renal endpoint similarly like credence, there was increase in heart failure signal in the sonar, whereas there was significant decrease in heart failure in the credence trial. And that makes, uh, you know, this discussions live. And perhaps this is one of the rarest trial to be stopped prematurely credence due to the excess benefit in the canagliflozin R. So what was the credence trial uh, into the nutshell? And if you analyze the data from 2000 to 2020, you can see in your downside, you can see the trial conducted in DKD or CKD either shown no benefit or rather harm. The only trial which shown benefit since 2001 from IDNT and renal is the, is the, is the credence trial. So we had, we had to wait for almost 19 years to have uh, one molecule which can prevent diabetic kidney disease at the top of uh, you know, ARBs and this is what is the credence trial is all about. So you may notice this credence trial was uh, started prior to the impareg outcome result was published. So nobody believed that there would be any benefit uh, with the ZLT2 inhibitor either, which actually we failed with any anti-diabetic drugs in the past uh, in the CB outcome trials. Uh, but so the credence has nothing to do with the outcome of the impareg or the CANVAS program because this trial was planned and started uh, prior to the result of impareg outcome trial. And the difference between credence, as you all have seen this particular slide, that these are the patients having established kidney disease, uh, as you know, uh, and having a significant uh, macroalbinuria uh, from 300 to 5,000 milligram per day. Uh, and uh, the average EGFR, as you can see, is only 56. So everyone has got a CKD, and their median urinary albumin creatinine ratio was significantly higher, 927. Let me remind you that Carmelina also has got surprisingly mean EGFR of 56, but the median USCR is only 56 in Carmelina, and that's not the dedicated uh, kidney disease trial in diabetes. Only 60% in Carmelina had diabetic nephropathy, so I have not included into this discussion. So if you compare the credence and with the previous SGLT2 trial, uh, as you can make out, these are the patients conducted in a diabetic kidney disease, which is well diagnosed with 60% of patients with EGFR less than 60, and 88% of the patients with USCR more than 300. Both the criteria has to be filled in their credence trial to start with into the trial. This trial had a primary objective of renal endpoint, which was a composite of you know, progression to ESRD, doubling of serum creatinine, or renal or cardiovascular death. And it was hierarchical, you know, uh, statistically testing manner, uh, and so that if the primary objective of the study is met, the entire power of statistics goes to the secondary outcome in a hierarchical fashion from bullet number one to bullet number eight. This was the you know, primary statistical plan of the you know, credence trial. And what happened in this particular trial, I would like to take you through this summary slide rather than going through in details, that there was a significant reduction in the primary composite of renal endpoint. There was a 30% reduction in this primary composite uh, in an exclusive uh, renal endpoint trial. Because there was a benefit in the primary outcome which achieved superiority in p-value, the entire st statistical power shifted to the secondary outcome. And the first one in the secondary objective was the composite of cardiovascular death or hospitalization due to heart failure. You can see there was a 31% reduction in this outcome. Then the third was when this is achieved, superiority is achieved, the second bullet is achieved, the statistical power shifts to the point number three, which is primarily a three-point miss of cardiovascular death, non-fatal MIR stroke, which we saw 
in the impare canvas and dicleotime program so again this was second time assessed with canagliflozin in the credence trial and you can see here there is a 20% reduction in the composite of three point mesh remember in the canvas program it was only 14% in impare it was only 14% in dicleotime there was no benefit in three point mesh so repeatedly in the credence trial not only the renal endpoint was met but again the three point mess which was the primary endpoint in the canvas trial was again seems to be highly significant with 20% reduction uh, compared to the canvas similarly then the power goes to heart failure and there you can appreciate there is a 39% reduction in heart failure remember in canvas it was 33% in impareg it was 35% now it is showing 39% in the credence trial and needless to say that everything went positive from bullet number 1 to 5 only the it stopped was at cardiovascular death which just missed the bus and again you can see there was a 22% decrease in cardiovascular death but it couldn't achieve the statistical superiority because p value just reached 0.05 so hence then other parameters like all cause and cb death would be considered just explored well then what was surprising in credence that uh, unlike the previous thought that the benefit extended not only to the patients with a preserved egfr but the benefit perhaps uh, you know suggested that it is extending or rising more in a patients with even a severe esrd with someone with egfr less than 60 uh, benefited higher than the patients with egfr between 60 to 90 as you know in credence the egfr cutoff was between 30 to 60 and you can appreciate when it was stratified into three category somehow patients with lower egfr benefited larger than patients with a better egfr and if you see this number needed to treat uh, to protect kidney it seems to be only 16 much better than a statin much better than aspirin or arb or ace inhibitor so that was surprising uh, in the in you know in this particular trial and no wonder uh, you know there was also the, no signals of you know amputation in the credence trial unlike canvas program so this finding perhaps led uh, you know and if you take over all uh, the entire credence together uh, see the number needed to treat is 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 such a small thereby suggesting and as you know that if nnt is less than 50 the drug seems to be significant even in the spirin trial the nnt it was around 100 if you see the other trials in impareg it was 35 for statin it is 50 uh, surprisingly in credence trial nnt comes down to somewhere uh, especially in primary composite and point to around 22 which is of course surprising and wasn't seen earlier with any studies Uh, which was done in patients with kidney disease and no wonder why ada uh, esd standard positioning uh, has actually there is a dynamic change in this particular guidelines so uh, on june 3 uh, this year so you know few days back uh, the credence trial data was included into the ada guideline and now people are recommending that Uh, with the credence trial data somehow this benefit should be extended to patients with even egfr 30 so earlier we had a cut off of egfr with with majority of sglt2 especially with impa uh, and cana up to 45 now with this credence trial uh, there is a suggestion that patients even with less than egfr 45 up to 30 seems to be benefiting uh, quite in the credence trial and that's the reason why ada position statement has updated this findings into their guidelines when we go back into further quickly these this data were presented at ada in san francisco on the last day and many people uh, many of you might not have seen you may, may have left so they divided in this you know entire credence trial into primary and secondary uh, you know uh, uh, population and what was surprising to note that if you see the renal endpoint on the basis of primary and secondary prevention cohort the surprising the benefit extended in a patients with a primary prevention cohort means patients with kidney disease who didn't have established chronic kidney disease uh, established cardiovascular disease also seems to be benefiting uh, from the credence trial so this was about renal outcome if you see the cb outcome on the basis of primary and secondary cohort in the credence trial what was surprising to see that the 3p miss 
benefit was extending to the primary prevention cohort in the credence trial. You can see uh, their uh, upper bound 95% confidence inter interval is less than one, although the p-value of heterogeneity is not significant, but there is a hint that, uh, you know, this trial shows not only benefit in the secondary uh, CB cohort, but also extending seems to be to the primary cohort as well. And if you see this data uh, and compare with the previous uh, GLT2 trial, although we could notice that in your lower bottom section in canvas and in declared TME, although there was no suggestion in the three-point mesh benefit in the primary prevention cohort, the credence trial would be the first one among the SGLT2 trial which suggested that the benefit in the kidney outcome extends uh, to the primary prevention cohort as well and surprisingly in credence benefit in three-point mesh was was relatively higher in the primary prevention cohort compared to the secondary prevention cohort, which was just opposite to the previous CANBUS, IMPAREG, and declared TME program. And also, again, if you see this, you know, cardiovascular benefit like renal benefit extended to the patients who had even the lower EGFR and patients with higher albumin creatinine ratio, that was the newer findings in the credence trial. And no wonder if you have attended ADA in San Francisco, this is a Medscape headline that the newer data from Credence knocks your socks off the new analysis at ADA. And this cartoon uh, highly depicts unbelievable data that you need to take your socks off when you see the Credence primary data on renal endpoint as well as the cardiovascular endpoint data uh, which is presented recently. Thank you very much for patience.